Amir Adnani is CEO of Uranium Energy Corp., the largest uranium producer in the U.S. Amir, it's good to see you again. So where do we go from here? I mean, Kelly, uh, this is just incredible. It's, uh, it's really transformational. We're finally seeing an alignment of, of market forces, big tech really voting with this wallet, uh, as evidenced with the, the latest deal announced today with Meta and Constellation. But then seeing Washington really invoke national security to rebuild the uranium supply chain that we need domestically to really bring together the energy that's needed for uh, AI ambitions that big tech has. So this is, uh, I hate to use kind of an overused term maybe, but this is the most perfect alignment of stars you could ask for for nuclear energy. Nuclear energy is back in a big way. Right. Although, you know, again, we talk a lot about how you know, the big traditional reactors, these were huge projects. Bringing new ones online takes a very, very long time. So um, maybe small modular, um, those start to come online. That changes the narrative a little bit. Um, but to what extent are these new power sources that big tech is tapping versus existing ones that they're trying to siphon off? I think it's a blend of both. And you touch on an excellent point. Look at today's announcement with Meta and Constellation. Not only will they look to extend the life of the Clinton reactor by 20 years, but they're talking about now using that site to deploy advanced and small reactors on that site, which could really benefit from accelerated permitting. But look at the executive orders that President Trump signed over a week ago, quadrupling a nuclear power by 2050, uh, having five gigawatts of upgrade by 2030, and having 10 gigawatts, that's 10 new reactors, large ones, under construction by 2030. That's around the corner. And so... This is, this is incredibly positive because, and I think what's positive about today's announcement is that since we had the executive orders signed by President Trump, a lot of market participants were saying, well, are these executive orders backed by market reality? Mm -hmm. And to see that 24-7 baseload power is so essential to big tech's energy needs, evidenced by today's deal, and that renewables are not going to be able to satisfy this incredible thirst for energy that's out there. This combination of, again, government policy with the real market demand that makes nuclear investable. And I think making nuclear investable is really the key thing, that this is not a sector that's looking for subsidies. This is a sector that's investable. Uh, Again, big tech uh, has that demand. We're seeing it. Don't forget about Microsoft's constellation deal from last September either. And now I think the big question is, Can we get the uranium supplies up and running? Can we power these nuclear reactors? And even if we get five big builds by 2030, forget 10, that's an incredible amount of growth. There didn't used to be this kind of growth, Kelly, before in the U.S. Nuclear was not growing in the U.S. It was growing and still is growing in China and India. And it's exciting to see nuclear energy growth come back to this country. Hey, Amir, it's Dom. I I, want to just get your take on this. Do you feel as though the collective consciousness of us as Americans is now open to the idea that we have a basically insatiable thirst for power when it comes to this kind of energy? And is it enough to make sure that nuclear has a very clear and predictable glide path into the future? It used to be not in my backyard. Do you think that's still the case or not? It's unbelievable to watch uh, college football games and to see students in the background holding up nuclear energy signs. Nuclear has become cool. And I think small modular reactors backed by people like Sam Altman, Elon Musk, Bill Gates are really bringing a new uh, level of energy and entrepreneurship and innovation to nuclear. Uh, and, And look, at the end of the day, AI can't run on hope and sunshine. It needs base load power, around the clock power. And this is the final, I think, conclusion, Dom, that we're coming to is that no more no more messing around. We need around the clock energy. Nuclear is the only solution that does that does that in an emission free basis. So now you've got, again, I think the coming together of, of, of these incredible forces, the best of what the country has to offer. The, the big power of innovation and the financial muscle of big tech, combined with the right policy, combined with the existing fleet, over 90 reactors that are operating, already powering one in every five home in America. We just got to now address the fuel side of it, because effectively we're importing 100 percent of the uranium requirements for all this positive development that we're talking about. So 
Uh, I agree with you, though. The mood has changed, the attitude has changed, and even the environmental community has come to realize that without nuclear, we're not going to meet the climate targets.